We're going to go over so many dang things in this video. We're going to be talking about how to find the perfect base location, optimizing your resource extractors. We're going to be talking about robots, how connectors work for storage, the issues that arise with connectors and bugs that people are seeing, how connectors work for sending materials between outposts. And not only that, I have a graph and I'm going to show you how to set up a very clean base. I've spent days compiling all this stuff, so I hope it helps you. Now, a lot of you have put comments in my videos that have brilliant observations, and I just want to share a few of those awesome ideas and give credit to the people so with at the godless artists for aligning things in outpost view it spins like crazy drives me nuts you can go to your controls and change the outpost rotation speed you can put it down to one another thing you can do is you can name your outpost which would make things way easier for you if you just go up and hit r on them don't hold r because that will delete the outpost just pancake hot dog suggested that you buy ammo since it doesn't have weight with any excess it's a great idea nick stefan pointed out that the robots are useful for helium extraction since you have things that are powered by it so if i go to titan i rest for 500 hours it's like well why do i need 30 percent production right because i'm filling up all that stuff but the helium is actually still relative to that because it's consuming for those 500 hours buzz sx said he took 100,000 plutonium to Neon with him and sold it to every vendor and bought every resource there. He then went back to the lodge, which is the first house you get with the creepy people and the watch, you know, in the beginning of the game. And there is an infinite chest there in the basement on the table in front of the research machine. So you can store infinite resources there and craft and research everything in the game. All right, so now we're going to get into everything, starting off with picking a resource base and how to find a location that has iron, beryllium, aluminum, and helium-3. Primarily, we're going to focus on the fact that for inter-system shipment of goods, you're going to need a helium source to power that. So you want to make sure that your main HQ has access to H3. All right, let's get into it. Now, a lot of my guides are based upon Androphon, Samati, and of course my Plutonium guide if you've watched it on Grimsy. So we're going to focus on these areas, okay? So let's talk about some of the things people are saying, some of the things that I've read. So a really interesting thing, Dan Jal 87 n brought to my attention that the survey map is essentially showing you biome. For Androphon, iron can spawn with the high frequency within mountain ranges and other resources seem to spawn in the crater biome so the trick to getting multiple resources in one biome isn't necessarily looking exactly here but at the geography of the area so you can see here we have beryllium helium 3 which we want aluminum and that's all kind of spawning in this crater whereas the iron is in the high mountainous area here so the trick to finding all of these is trying to land somewhere like right here so you wouldn't think it because of the way everything looks here like anything in life it's usually hard let's try here all right so we already have aluminum beryllium helium 3 very nice area we're gonna head towards the mountains here this might be the goldilocks this i have a good feeling now that i understand how these resources are spawning helium aluminum beryllium in the, in the crater and iron in the mountains this is really cool i all the other places had really small hills this actually has a full right here right here beryllium iron aluminum and helium 3. So what I had to do was spawn in the valley and run towards the mountain. That is beautiful. And I'm actually not going to set this base up because I want to show you how links work and how to ship materials between the outposts. But I wanted to show you how you can set up and find these super bases. Okay, so finally, we can talk about overlapping extractors. There's a thin yellow line. So the question is, with this line, when do you start losing efficiency? We're going to have these two outside of each other and we're going to see what that does and then we're going to have this guy all by himself nothing intersecting and this is where it gets tricky so we can see our production per minute and that actually might be the best way to do this so if i move this do i see my production per minute increasing or decreasing no what if i place it all the way over here still says 3.3 per minute 
All right, let's let's get up a few solar arrays so that we can uh, see things in real time. All right, 4.44. So here's here's the problem. I'm getting 1.11 no matter where I place these. So there's really no penalty. So that would mean that theoretically you just want to make sure you're fitting these as close together as it allows you. The very center of the extractor itself seems to be setting the boundary. It looks a little wonky, right? That right when I get out of the sphere of this extractor, it allows me to place another extractor. Overlapping extractors doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any negatives. So what you want to do is just make sure you're optimizing the amount of extractors that you have. You can use these circles as a gauge. Place one here. See the circles over there. So now I can place one here. So if I want to optimize this, I want to make sure I'm minimizing the amount of space these circles are taking up right there. So this is how I would do it. I would do it kind of like this. You can see this one though. The circle is definitely really close, but not intersecting the center of the extractor as the point. But that's how you would do this for all of this if you wanted to optimize your beryllium extractors. So that's that. I don't think there's anything more to go on. Let me know if you disagree. Do it respectfully is my only request. You don't need to be a dick to make a point. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is robots. And we need to make six zero wire for the three robots. So what we're gonna be looking at here are the sanitation mini bots. One you have from the start. You can only have three robots. All right, so the sanitation mini bot gives a 10% production to inorganic resources. Increases organic resources by 10%, we're not touching that. And the engineering re robot increases production rate of manufactured items by 10%. Could be good to have a hub that just does manufacturing if you wanna automate it. Then you want to go with engineering robot and for your outposts that are resource gatherers you want to go with the sanitation and it doesn't make a lot of sense that it's called a sanitation mini robot but we're gonna place three of these and you can see the product production in the bottom right is increasing so this should have increased it by 30 percent so there's no reason not to make these at all they're so cheap they're four aluminum three beryllium and zero wire one silver and one copper which you have plenty of if you followed my guide except for the silver they're practically free really recommend that you use them all right so we're going to talk about connectors storage connectors how to connect outposts how to do all that jazz so let's talk about the elephant in the room this game has bugs it's got some pretty shitty bugs in fact i've noticed it and i've had to tear down some of my storage builds i'll have a bunch of containers all stacked up have to tear them down so what people are saying is it's when you go over 60 storage units and i've noticed this for myself shit gets bugged out and it stops feeding the whole chain just actually stops so keep in mind for the time being i'm recommending you don't have more than 60 links per operation now i don't necessarily know if that means you can't have a bunch of storage more than 60 storage i'm saying you don't want to have more than 60 the connections. So let's start with the basic connectors and we'll go with the beryllium. So one thing I'm actually going to suggest you do is not to mix your storage and have multiple resources going into it again because of the issues. So we're going to have a separate area. I've also kind of just been doing sets of three like this. I kind of like it because if you go really, really high, you can get kind of annoying linking everything. It's actually easier to link things on ground. Then you can do it just like this. Right click, E, right click, E, right click, E, right click, E. You do realistically have plenty of rooms. I've just been kind of keeping it simple like this. So if I want to have a bunch of these, I might go higher. For the time being, we're gonna keep it really simple. Now I do also use one box as my main connector. And the reason I do this is so I can see, it's just a lot easier to know the, the main box. If I have this up top, it gets really annoying and it gets finicky. So that's just my advice to use, like just keep it simple. So you can see we're right clicking and then hitting E on the PC. So now all of these will go straight into this box and I'm gonna have this come up into here and there. And then I just kind of do a zigzag motion as you're seeing. I'm doing this really fast-ish. Uh, I gotta turn down my, my stuff. It is actually a lot easier to do this on foot, uh, be, but I just do it anyway. All right, so now this bottom right box is our guy. Now we are gonna have a transfer container and I'm gonna do some boxes for this guy too. We'll have a transfer container in the middle of all of them and then I'll keep it here. But this way I can get an equal distribution of everything. Again, if you do it in sets of three, it's really easy. You can just hit E, E, E 
and then you tab out, and then I don't have to worry about any of it. It's also really good to see if you're doing the connectors correctly, if you do them in smaller batches. Now, if you want to make the Trump Tower in this game and just have, you know, 40 boxes, that, that's your journey, and I won't judge you. Just know that it is kind of actually a pain in the ass. All right, so this is the blast one. It's going to go here. I'm going to tie all of these guys over to here. I think out of everything I'm showing you, this is the one takeaway to make your life easy, is to have just one ground box, okay? All right, and from there, we link it to the first box in the loop, the top box here, and then that will swing it all around. That way, when this is full, these are accumulating in goods, and we need this transfer container so that we can pull stuff from our ship. Also, you can walk straight up to this and just keep pulling on it and it will keep pulling from all the boxes. This makes it really easy because you just have to go to one place to get all of your resources. I put this right next to my small landing pad. That way I can just walk straight off and access my resources right there. When I pull from here, it keeps pulling from all the other boxes. So I can go right here, like I said, pull from the whole chain. But you can see we've connected all of our boxes to this main container. So we're accumulating the beryllium and the aluminum in equal quantities. I just find it a lot easier. Sleep five hours, that's why I love this moon. Five hours, one hour is five hours of production. So it's flowing from here and it's flowing to this being the last unit. So you can see that I have 153 in here and 51 in here. So when I take beryllium from here, right, these other units, they flow real slow. Um, in fact, they hardly flow. That's why I use the transfer link because over here, when I pull resources, it just sucks from all of the containers. I don't know how other people do this, but I just use the transfer container. Um, it just, it sucks everything. So you can see I pulled everything that was available and it pulled everything from these containers. So I didn't have to sit here and wait for it to transfer or any of that stuff. One unit to pull all the resources. Now we're going to talk about cargo links and how those work. So the way cargo links work is only one point between one point can be connected. Now the outpost management skill, which is a tier three skill in the social tree is pretty useful. Rank one gives additional cargo links that can be placed at outposts. That doesn't change the one for one relationship though. Additional robots can be placed. Additional crew could be assigned to outposts and outpost extractors produce twice as fast. This is an incredibly useful one if you're going with this. However, I will note with the being able to go to Venus and get 500 hours of production and one hour of rest, the only thing that benefits from double production is the helium and the generators because those stay constant with time using so much helium per hour then that's where it comes into benefit so we need to create a little bit more zero wire and we're going to build our first cargo link now you're limited to three if you have the base skills i actually like to place these closer to the landing pad so i have ease of access however we're going to try something a little different this time so we're going to place our cargo link now if i want to link this to another outpost i need to build a cargo link at that outpost too and so like i said these are one for one you can't have three cargo links all linked you can only have one cargo link link to another cargo link building so you're going to go up here and you're going to select an available outpost so my other outposts are already linked. So we're gonna go to HQ. My HQ, which is also my iron mine, which I now want to link to my new base, which I'm making the mega base. This way I can get iron and all the things I need at my outposts. So I'm gonna to go to the control console and I'm gonna switch it from outpost two to the outpost we're at now. So you see, I go to the cargo link here. I select the outpost I want to send it to. These guys are linked. Now, here's the question you're probably asking yourself. Okay, so how do I distinguish between inbound and outbound? And I'll answer that with two responses. Bugs. Sometimes these things don't work correctly because they are bugged. And you have to destroy both cargo links and redo the whole process. So if you've done everything correctly, you're still having issues. That could be the problem. It could just be bugged. So we're going to talk about why people are seeing their shit come in a circle. The problem is, is that you have all of your inventory incoming and outgoing all connected in a chain. So I'm going to show you a diagram. So what you're going to do is make sure that you do not have your transfer container connected 
to the outgoing box of your cargo link. That was a huge mistake I made in my last video. I do apologize. That's why it's circling. Now your cargo link has two boxes, incoming and outgoing. I know it seems pretty obvious, but I'm gonna explain it anyway. Incoming are the resources coming in from the other outpost. Outgoing are the resources from, that are being sent from this outpost to the other outpost. What you're gonna do is connect the last box of your storage to the outgoing and then do an additional link from the outgoing to your transfer station. This will allow you to connect all of your storage devices to the transfer station so you can pull all the resources when you land and keep it so that the incoming resources aren't put back into a circle. That's why like, if I have aluminum coming here, then I'm shipping aluminum back. It's because I was running all my outgoing through the transfer station and that was the mistake. The second thing you wanna do for your incoming is walk up to your incoming, hold E and go down to output link. You can also just go into the build menu and then wanna put it into a separate storage system. Then you'll link that storage system and then the very last one, you're going to, you guessed it, right click and throw it into the transfer station. Now, only the resources I have here are being linked from their immediate storage to the outgoing and all of the incoming is being linked to another storage area into the transfer station. Now it's important to have these separate storages because the transfer station gets full after like two or three. So by doing this, when you rest, all of your storages are backing up with those resources. Now I wanna preface this by saying, though in the design I'm about to show you, we will actually not be having anything incoming. So your main base, you do not want any storages whatsoever connected to any outgoing box. It's all coming in. Uh, Samati. So I'm going to need cargo link in each of those outposts and two cargo links in the main base. So you can see here, I have from the storage going to the transfer station and from the storage going to the output on the left outpost. And the same with the right outpost, same thing. But on the main base, nothing going out, both of them coming in to their own storages. And then from those storages linked to the transfer station, and of course the extractors each also have their own storage. So you want everything that is flowing to have its own unique individual storage system. So here we are back on the, cool, the coolest place in the world. Here is my secondary storage for the incoming iron. And now I can, so it's, it's, it comes in over here, zip, zags. I already linked everything. I've already showed you the link, so I really don't feel like I need to show you that again. And we're gonna link it to the transfer station. So what we're gonna be able to do at the end of this is go to the transfer station and pull from all of the storages in this. I need to fix this, I broke this. Um, I broke this bad. And again, the easiest way to link car containers is to just hit F, go to build mode, and then you can just do it by hand, way easier. And again, you can do how many storage you want. Um, I believe that because I'm separating out the storage and the link is ending when it's connected to the transfer station. I think that each one of these counts as its own link chain. So this will also allow you to have massive storages for each of the areas of operation with potentially avoiding those bugs. So this is actually potentially a way to get around it and also a much cleaner method. Do not connect anything at all to the cargo link. We are only taking here. We are only receiving. That sounds dirty. One more cargo link to receive the copper from our other base. Now I've already set that base up. You need to watch my second guide. Use everything I taught you in here and ignore any of the stupid shit I said in that other video. All right, so again, we're gonna set down the cargo link, an area for receiving all this. So here you have your, your outgoing. Remember, nothing's going out. Everything's coming in. So link that here. We're gonna do this by hand and look how far away we can do it from too. This actually is a lot better, much better than what I was doing before. And then we're gonna link it to the transfer station. So now all of our incoming and locally produced goods are fixed to the transfer station. We just need to now connect this. This is the thing about the outpost is sometimes you have to go there and set them up. So here's our copper outpost. If a link is established, you can only change it from where that link is established. All right, so I have a cargo link right over here. And we're just gonna switch this to go to our other outpost. Okay, so it looks like this is actually bugged. This is not uh, bringing in anything. This is the one that I switched to 
Samati. So this is actually what I was talking about earlier. This is all bugged out now. So I have to delete this. And I have to go to Samati and delete that one. What a pain. Maybe an issue that's occurring when you're switching the links, though I did switch the other link too. So we're going to replace this link. Same concept. So we got 500 copper going and outgoing. I just, honestly, that's the lesson I learned here is when you're doing these cargo links, do fresh cargo links because something's something's wrong. Okay, cargo link. What's great is you don't have to worry about where really, you really put this stuff. So remember, no outgoing. Everything is always incoming. So we're going to take this into the first in the chain and then we're gonna link this to the transfer container sometimes i, I click so fast um, that i don't really think about what i'm doing you can hit r to transfer so just sleeping five hours with very minimal boxes uh basic setup we're looking at let's I'm just gonna do this really quick. Thousand aluminum beryllium, 500 copper. And that is from, the 500 is the exact amount of the cargo landing. So that in lies the question, how do cargo links determine any of that stuff? Is it time or is it like literally an operation? Cause that's what it feels like to me. All right. So here comes the copper. So if I sleep right now, is that thing gonna be landing or still in motion? It's still landing. So the way that the cargo links, I think, work is not based on time, but um, visual operation. And it could be that I'm screwing it up by being here, okay? So, taking forever. Okay, so personally... Oh man, they're, they're killing me with this shit. Yeah, I'm still waiting. So, personally, I go outpost to outpost and I just go to the transfer stations, but I wanted to show you how you could set this up. I think I'm screwing it up by being here. Probably advise that you do is go to Venus and just land, sleep in your ship. All right, we're just gonna sleep for five hours. That's 500 UT and we're gonna go back. It's been 500 hours. We haven't been here to screw up any animations or delivery of goods. So it looks like leaving and coming back did not change any of the timing issues. So the operation of the cargo link is definitely separate from time. What's great about what I've shown you though is eventually this might work, but it's still a cleaner process because you're not gonna have the circling of goods. All you're gonna do is just go outpost to outpost and walk up to your transfer container. If time isn't an issue, you could sit here and let the copper and the iron proc, and you could in theory technically never leave this spot. Unfortunately, it doesn't work the way we want it to work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me forever to get all this information together so i appreciate your likes and comments as they help with the algorithm here is my outpost guide too if you're interested i will link it right now